When I was growing up, my mother was getting her PhD in psychology, and my father was a surgeon who also wrote a lot about the brain. So you could just say that we were talking about the brain or the mind my whole upbringing. Actually, my father in fourth grade brought a brain in formaldehyde to my class to show the kids, which had a very strong imprint in my brain. I went on to create quite a few films that deal with the brain, including Brain Power from Neurons to Networks, which really looks at the best ways to nurture a child's brain from birth to five years. Basically, what I learned from these neuroscientists was that in the first five years in life, the critical thing is to stimulate and nurture the child enough that you're connecting all the different parts of the brain. A child is born with 100 billion neurons in his or her brain, and it's the number of neurons that they'll have for the rest of their life but the connections between those neurons aren't there yet. So during those first five years of life, when the brain is growing really rapidly, every moment of eye contact, every new word a child hears, makes new parts of the brain light up, and these connections are what form the architecture of the brain. I, I was talking to all these neuroscientists about connecting all the different parts of a child's brain. It was as if they were talking to me about the web. There's so many people that aren't connected and there's so many connections that haven't been made online. And we need to think about all the ways to kind of stimulate and nurture the growth of the web too. Matt Ridley wrote this great book called The Rational Optimist. And in it, he looks throughout history at when innovation happens and it usually happens in cities because you have the most people bumping up against each other from different perspectives to kind of solve a problem in a city. So if you can imagine the internet in that framework, Hopefully, seven billion people will be able to interact and gather around problems. We're still so far away from really having the bigger insights that are going to happen when everyone who wants to be online is online. I mean, just imagine if you were using only a third of your brain's potential. When you think about the brain metaphor, there's some really exciting research done that shows that storytelling is one of the most effective ways to establish neural connections. It's through stories that a child learns to relate to the outside world, and studies have actually shown that preschoolers who have more stories read to them are better at empathizing with others. Just for example, if I'm telling my daughters there are girls all over the world your age and they can't get an education. They will receive it in one part of their brain. But if I say to them, there's a girl that's your age named Malala who was very close with her family and her family believed all girls should get an education and while she was taking a bus, she was harmed and she was shot for trying to get an education and then recovered and then wrote a book and now speaks out and is an advocate and still has her family and support I mean, that just activated so many different parts of their brain. And they're going to relate, they're going to think of their own family, they're going to think of their own memories, and it's just going to have a much deeper imprint. So if you think about the internet as a brain and imagine what can happen if we can get everyone who wants to be online online, all of that collective wisdom and perspective, and if we can harness that power to share stories, we can create better emotional connections in ourselves and with people around the world. There also can be stories for bad, too, because we're human, and those are all encapsulated in the human spirit. But I believe stories used in the right way can really move us forward. I do these collaborative films with people all over the world that I call cloud films. And I think one of the most exciting inventions that not enough people talk about is when on the cell phone, they put that little button that makes it so you can film yourself. Think about the power of the visual, of video, of being able to actually see the faces of people going through something. We're really going to be able to see the cause and effect of our actions in real time. And as more people come online and interact, we're going to be compelled to work together to solve collective problems we face. When technology enables a truly global connected intelligence, the kind of insights we're going to be able to have, we can't even imagine yet.